Reza Aslan was at some sort of conference recently in California. We actually covered parts of this before when he slammed Bill O'Reilly's book about Jesus at the same conference. Well, we have some new video where he talks about Bible literalism. I think the best skill that we can learn uh, is how to read the Gospels. We come from a world in the 21st century in which we assume that biblical literalism, the notion that the Bible that is literal and inerrant, uh, is just sort of an inherent part of belief in the Bible. It isn't. The concept of biblical literalism in the 2,000 year history of the New Testament is a little more than a hundred years old. Let me just say that one more time. In the 2,000 year history in which the Gospels have existed, the idea that what you are reading in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is literal and inerrant is a little more than a hundred years old. It was the result of a very interesting movement, uh, a backlash to Christian liberalism and the scientific revolution at the end of the 19th century, uh, end of the 20th century, excuse me. Um, uh, I'm sorry, end of the 19th century. What century are we in? Yeah, the end of the 19th century um, uh, by a group of American Protestants who began a, a movement uh, that was launched by a series of tracts that were written uh, called the fundamentals, and that is where we get the term fundamentalism from. It's a very new phenomenon. That's not how Christians have historically read the Gospels. It's certainly not how the church fathers who collected the Gospels read them, and it's absolutely not how the Gospel writers themselves intended them to be read. Uh, and I can I go through great lengths in the book to explain you know what I mean by that. Um, I mean, I'll put it in the simplest way possible. The Gospels are absolutely replete with historical errors and with contradictions. Which is why I say you shouldn't believe them. Now, here's the thing. From the perspective of the best outcome for society, I think Reza Aslan is right when he says... Well, people should read these holy books through the lens of this is not literally true. Uh, you should really, in all seriousness, Reza Aslan acts in everyday life, and I would say all good religious people act in everyday life like secular humanists. Where they just act, you know, like anybody else would, like I would, like you would, and they're just decent, moral, good people. But the idea that these weren't meant to be taken literally. I don't think that's true. In fact, I think Reza kind of makes that up. Again, I think it's best for society if people don't take it literally. But I think the idea that it's not is a pretty little lie that people tell themselves to continue to say they're religious when they don't abide by the tenets of said holy book. So there's no passage. Here's my argument as to why I don't think that they were meant to not be taken literally. There's no passage in the Bible. There's no passage in the Quran. There's no passage in any holy book that says, LOL, JK dog, don't take this seriously. It's all like an allegory, bro. That doesn't exist. And many of the things in the Bible, there's not even a theoretical allegorical meaning behind it. I mean, that's something, there's no good answer that, that people like Reza have for that. Where it's like, okay, so you're saying the Bible was meant to be read allegorically. Okay, well then what's the allegory behind stone gay people to death? What's the allegory? <laughs> what, the allegory is just uh, be a dick to gay people? Is that the allegory behind it? Uh, what's the allegory behind you're not allowed to eat pork, you're not allowed to eat shellfish? No, it's not an allegory. What the reality is, is at that time, some people ate it and got sick and died, so they warned people in the book, the holy book, don't eat this stuff, man, we don't want you to get sick and die. I mean, that's the real message behind it. What, what's the allegorical meaning behind men shouldn't shave their face or cut their hair? That's in the Bible. What's the allegorical meaning behind that? We want people to look like grunge band members, metal band members. I don't know. Again, there's no, not even a theoretical meaning behind that that's allegorical. If there is, I can't come up with one. I don't know what they're trying to get at. 
the Noah story. What the fuck is the allegory uh, behind Noah? So an, a guy who lives to age 900 or 950, he gets every animal on a boat onto a boat that's bigger than any boat that's ever been built in human history with wood, and he gets them to have sex on a boat, and they survive, and then when it's over, they fucking pitter-patter their way all the way to the kangaroos, get to Australia somehow. No, there's no... there's. I don't even see an allegorical meaning behind that. What's the meaning? Don't be a dick because if you're a dick, then God's going to flood the earth and some weird, creepy old man is going to have to save the planet. I, is that the allegory behind it? I don't know. There's not... That's the thing. There is no even made-up allegory you can come up with for all this stuff. So to say that the Bible is allegorical is just a massive sidestep. It's just a, a way for smart people to try to argue that they, it's intellectual for them to be religious still, even though it's not intellectual for them to be religious. It's high-minded rationalizations that I don't think make any sense when it comes down to it. And look, the most important part is the central story of Jesus must be believed to be a Christian. And what is the central story? The death and the resurrection. So, you have to at least buy into some of the bullshit to be a Christian. At the very least, you have to say, well, that part is true, because that's the only part that shows this is how he became God, the, the, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the three people, but they're one person. If you don't believe that part, then you're just not a Christian by definition. To, you have to believe that to be a Christian. That's the key part of the story. So, you have to buy into some bullshit and believe some of it is literal in order to be a Christian. But Reza Aslan would brush all this aside, and like he said to Jenk when he sat down with Jenk for an interview, he said something like, do you know that the way that we understand truth today in the sense that it's empirical truth is not very old? It's only, a, whatever he said, a few hundred years old or whatever it is? Like, I don't, how is that a point? So, who cares? But now we have that kind of truth. That truth is superior to other kinds of truth because it's real, okay? So what are you going to do? Uh, just say, let's abide by the the dumber standard, the more primitive standard of what truth is, and think about things like that? No, we have this thing where we can actually ascertain the nature of reality. Why would we dismiss that to be kind to belief systems that are dogmatic in their nature? Of course, I'm talking about the holy books. So look, in a lot of ways, I really do, everybody knows, um, Reza, I'm a big 50-50 guy on Reza, because I think He's great sometimes. Sometimes I love it when he talks about Israel-Palestine. I love it. When he goes after the goofball right-wingers, I love it. But then when he, uh, you know, tries to slam Bill Maher and Sam Harris, eh, sometimes he goes way too far when he does that. And when he tries to argue that the intention of the Bible was to not be uh, literal and at face value, I don't even know how to respond to that. I think it's such a, a weird, strange, off-base point, because I think that's obviously not true. What reason would anybody have to think it's the opposite. What reason would anybody have to think it's allegorical when so much stuff in there can't even be interpreted as allegorical under any possible interpretation? That part makes no sense.